you have arrived at your destination. Hi, this is Gene Simmons from KISS, and you're listening to Sean vs. Wild. And guess what? Now that you've heard this, you owe me $29.95. Go to KISSonline.com. Boom. That's right, Wildlings. You have arrived at your destination. It's the Sean vs. Wild podcast. You know what time it is, of course. It's time to rock and roll all night and podcast every Tuesday. I'm your host, as always, the man, the myth, the Sean Thriller Smith, the guy putting Rad back into Tonk Radio. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the world's greatest podcast ever, as voted by me and people that really like this podcast a lot. So, guys, you are in luck. Excellent show today. I'm talking to Melissa Manego, a.k.a. our buddy Mel from June Divided. Guys, if you haven't checked out June Divided yet, you definitely should. You can check them out thanks to the Revival 52 playlist. That's where I first uh, came across their music. But as we come to find out in this conversation, Mel and I have actually been at the same place at the same time, the same show in Philadelphia together. And we're going to be talking all about that. We're going to be talking all about uh, their upcoming album, Body Wars. We're going to be checking out their new single called I Didn't Mind. Uh, We're going to be talking about Netflix and movies that we absolutely love. It's a great conversation. I love being able to sit down and uh, get to know Mel. Uh, She was great. And guys, make sure you check out June Divided. Like I said, they got Body Wars, their brand new album, and that's going to be out in August. August 24th, actually, thanks to Revival Recordings. And also, guys, big thanks to my sponsor, per usual, every single week. I'm talking about Audiophile Inc., the OG sponsor. Shane at Audiophile has been setting me up four years. He can get you set up, too, for all your screen printing needs. Tank tops, t-shirts, whatever. Trust me, you're going to want those tank tops, man. It's been hotter than hell outside lately, so make sure you get yourself uh, some cool tank tops with your um, business, your name, your band, whatever. Make sure you get that printed through Shane at Audiophile Inc. Just simply go to audiophileinc.com, A-U-D-I-O-P-H-I-L-E-I-N-K, Dot com. Tell them the wild man sent you. Also, big shout out to Audible. Guys, Audible takes care of me each and every week. All you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash Sean versus wild, and you're going to get a free 30-day trial of Audible. Check out a bunch of awesome books, man. Uh, who doesn't love a good book? And then who also has time to sit down and read? You got to get it on audiobook. Uh, choose from over 180,000. Just simply go to, again, audibletrial.com slash Sean versus wild. Get signed up. When you do, Audible gives me money. So they're going to make sure that happens. Make sure I get the lights uh, on again this month. Uh, Make sure you guys get some awesome new podcasts. So, yeah, big ups to Audible. Check it out. Audibletrod.com slash Sean versus Wild. You know what, guys? Not a lot uh, going on this week for the intro. I don't want to take up too much of your time because we have such an awesome uh, conversation. But I just want to say thank you guys so much uh, for checking out the show. Number five on iTunes a couple weeks ago. That was amazing. Uh, We've been number six. We've been number five, number four, number three. Can we get to number two or number one? Can we be number two? Some people definitely think this podcast is number two. We'll see. (laughs) But yeah. Uh, But guys, let's go ahead and get into it. This is my conversation with our new best friend, Mel. And uh, it's time to sit back, crank up the volume, and let's get wild. So, Mel, I noticed on your Facebook, it says you're interested in guitars, keyboards, and Netflix. What are you watching on Netflix right now? I got to know. Oh, my God. It's funny because I have it up. I actually paused it, as you as you called. Um, Priorities. Ar- I appreciate it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Ar- Arrested Development. I'm trying. I haven't seen the new. I'm I'm a huge fan. Me and Chris, our guitar player, we're like massive fans, and they just came out with the new season. So I'm trying to like rewatch the old season, get my boyfriend caught up on it, so we can all watch the fifth season. So <laughs> Arrested Development. Fantastic. Yeah, there's always money in the banana stand. I'll tell you that. Always money. You know, we played a show. Did you watch the the fourth the fourth uh, season? I actually have not. I've only watched the first three, oh. and then for some what? reason I fell out of four and five. Not that I didn't want to see it. I just have okay. a schedule where like, I'll watch like two or three episodes of a Netflix show and then never finish the season. I don't know why I am like that. Oh, man. 
oh man, so much stuff came out recently. I'm like, and my work is so crazy and stuff between the band is nuts. And I'm like, I've got all this stuff on my list to watch. Oh my God. The only thing I watched, oh my gosh. like binge watched, I binge watched uh, the new Queer Eye. And then oh. I, I like loved that. I thought that was like easy. You know, it's just one of those things like it was easy to watch in like a day. You know, you take a Saturday, make yes. it happen. But then, like, I'll, I'll try to watch, like, uh, every, a lot of people were recommending Altered Carbon to me. So I'll watch, like, the first couple mm. episodes. Big sci-fi fan. And I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Oh, nice. Then, oh, you're a sci-fi fan. Do you watch Westworld on HBO? I loved the first season of Westworld. I do not have HBO Go at the moment. So I have not seen any of the second season yet. Oh, my God. Okay. Like, I, I'm. that's like me. We're just sitting here waiting for Westworld. Like, that's what we're doing. We're sitting here waiting for Westworld. We're absolutely obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. We love that show. Oh, my God. Huge yeah. fans. Huge yeah. fans. I loved it, too. The first, uh, you know, the first season. I'm a big fan. Like, one of my favorite movies of all time is Blade Runner. And, like, the big themes of Blade Runner is just simply, like, what is it to be human? If you are, you know, these replicants, if you are, you know, if you look human, if you sound human, if you're made with human uh, enough parts and DNA, like, are you human even though you're not born you know, that sort of thing. And those, right, those, right. those are huge themes also in Westworld uh, mm -hmm. that I just love so much. And of course, Anthony oh Hopkins, God. Ed Harris knocked it out of the park. Oh my God. Jimmy Simpson, Jimmy Simpson. Oh my God. Dude, like, it's like Evan Rachel Wood. Oh my God. I'm obsessed with everyone. They're so good. And, um, this second season, I will tell you, it's been like a mixed reaction. I've loved it all. I thought it was all freaking great so far. So Another one um, of my favorite yeah, parts about that. Westworld is just the little Easter egg, like, you know, the old timey piano versions of, you know, a Radiohead song oh. or something like that oh, in the background. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's the same composer from um, from Game of Thrones. Oh, really? Yeah. He's, um, I, you know what, I, I, he has like an interesting name. I, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um but he's just so brilliant. Um, that's actually how my band got started, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, Chris, uh, uh, my guitar player, and I, we, we were writing music for for student films in college. Oh, and that's how it kind of got, that's kind of how we got started. That's actually what I had originally wanted to do. Um, and then we had like a senior project that came up and our we wanted to like score a film. And our professor told us to just like, write our own music like write our own songs and that's kind of how it kind of got started <laughs> that's awesome yeah i'm a, such a huge movie buff and tv show buff as well that's great and i thought that's for great. sure like when i was younger i was like i'm gonna go into the movie making business like i took classes and stuff throughout school to like make films and learn how to edit and all that sort of thing and then for some reason uh or somehow out of nowhere music became my thing uh like towards yeah. my last year of high school and then Sure enough, I made a career in the music business. Now I'm in the podcasting business, but I love movies. That's, that's great. Yeah, man, that, that's great. One, you know, and it's funny, our professor said we couldn't do a student film for our senior project because he didn't want like our grade to depend on somebody else, but we wanted to score the film anyway. So we did our senior project. So we like wrote a bunch of songs, which was like, unbeknownst to us, what would be the start of June divided. But then we, on top of that, we also scored the film. It was like a, we actually did a couple films, but the w big one that we did was like a cart. It was like a, um, almost like a Pixar. It was like a 3d animation one. And one of the kids that, that, um, animated it actually now is at Pixar, which is like really cool. To that is see that. amazing. Actually. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But guys, I, miss it. I actually, I, I miss scoring for film. It was like my first love. I loved it so much. It was awesome. Uh, well, you'll have to uh, you'll have to link me to some of your work. I'm sure it's yeah. probably out there on the internet, but I'd love to see it just because I love probably. movies and I love music, and it's a nice combination, That's, like a Reese's cup. That is, <laughs> yes, like a Reese's cup. Yes, chocolate and peanut butter, two great tastes that taste great together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. But guys, this oh, isn't this isn't just the Netflix. Uh, and streaming service podcast. This is actually the Sean versus Wild podcast. And of course, <laughs> I'm your host, the man, the myth, the Sean Thriller Smith, the guy putting Rad back into talk radio. And guys, today I'm talking to Melissa Manego, aka just Mel. I'm talking to Mel <laughs> from June Divided. And uh, Mel, great to talk to you here. Great to meet you. It's our first time ever chatting face to face, even though we found out we were at the same place at the same time years ago. 
and just never knew it. Yep. North Star Bar, when that was a thing. <laughs> North Star Bar, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yep. So you guys are in close with the homies, and uh, we were on tour with a band called Lion in the Main, Dimitri and uh, Andrew and everybody. Um, and they're in a new group now called Young Thieves. Awesome. Got to have them on the show. But uh, we are mutual friends with them, and it turns out when we played the show uh, back in 2015 in North Star Bar, you were there. I was there. I'm, I was there. I think I got yelled at. I think your singer might have yelled at me. For sit- I was standing in the back to protect my ears because like, I use my ears a lot on the job, and he <laughs> yelled at me for standing in the back. <laughs> that certainly wouldn't surprise me if the singer of my band did something that was kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, we're musicians. We're standing back here to protect our ears. <laughs> I forgot my earplugs. <laughs> That's okay. And I was like, that sucks. <laughs> but we- I liked it. It was great. It was a great show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, North Star Bar, That's a that's a that was a cool venue, and uh, I'll I always enjoyed playing there and I guess they don't hold shows there at all anymore or no, I know it kind of like kills me. Like it was such an important, we lost a lot of good venues. We, we really lost a lot of iconic venues recently in Philadelphia. We've gotten some cool ones, but we definitely have lo- lost some iconic ones. And North star was one of the ones that we were lost recently. Sure. Let me ask you, um, as a Philadelphia resident, where's the best cheesesteak? Oh man, best cheesesteak. Um, I'm well, going to hit you with the hard hitting talk... questions right now. Let's get it, let's get them out of yeah. the way here, folks. People want to know yeah, where's exactly. the best steak. Oh boy, I'm uh, sweating here with this answer. <laughs> okay, so um, Pat's are, people are going to tell you to go to Pat's and Gina's. That's like the tourist place. Like, but that's not the best cheesesteak. Like, that's like you go and there's like it's in South Philly and it's all you know, lit up, but it's not like the best cheesesteak. I would say the two best places for cheesesteak in my humble, I don't eat that many cheesesteaks. I'll eat one. They're good. I just not, I don't get them often. Um, I would say maybe Tony Luke's or, um, um, Steve, Steve's Prince of Steaks. Those two. Hmm. The tribe has spoken yeah. guys. I like that. Every, the tribe, the tribe spoken. all of the cheesesteak places are just somebody's names. So, so, you know, it's like, yeah, you got to yeah, go to Tony right. Luke's, you got to go to Steve's, you got to go to Gino's, Pat's, wherever. Yeah, wherever. I'll say if you're a vegan in the Philly area, you got to go to Blackbird. That That's uh, that's where it's at. Check it out, Oh, guys. I've never been there. I'm, I'm also not vegan. So that's <laughs> there you go. There. It's a one-two punch <laughs> of why I've never been there. <laughs> why well, I've never been there. <laughs> right. Sounds exactly. great, though. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, just like let's you know, Mel. It's great to chat chat with you here for the first time. And uh, you're saying that yes, likewise. That June divided um, got started uh, basically as a college project, or that's when you kind of had started getting the interest in writing music. Um, yeah. So, what made you decide to take it from you know scoring films in college to making it uh, into a, a making it into a band, making it into what it is yeah. today? Ooh, what a story. Well, I had always been a songwriter. Like I started writing songs when I was like in my teens, like my, you know, probably like, uh, I think I I remember trying to write something when I was like 11 or 12. And I always kind of like went back to that. So writing songs for me, that was like something I'd always done. Um, And in college I had met, um, most of us went to Drexel. Um, I met Chris, my guitar player in college. And we kind of just like worked together throughout college and, we kind of somehow just like we took a scoring a picture class and we were just it was the one thing we were good we were good at that you, you know so uh, a lot of the film kids would come to us and we were friends with the film kids and some of the digital media kids and so we would end up just doing their their little fi- their films or their class projects and it was that's kind of where it went um and then like yeah it was just at the end our our senior year was when we you know made a made an album um of actual like rock songs um, and I was like, this is fun. You know, that album has never surfaced. That's not out. <laughs> that was like, just like a project thing. Um, we did well in the project and that's where our name came from, <laughs> um, was from that project. I was going to trash the name when we actually decided to start the band, but our, uh, drummer said he wanted to keep it. Um, and we found our drummer after college. It was kind of like after college, like we were kind of, you know, it's tough when you graduate you don't really know what to do with yourself. Um, and so we kind of like started the band for fun. So that's kind of what started. 
the actual band. Fantastic. So you got all of that yeah. in the personal archives, never to see the light of day uh, to the public. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't even know where it is. And I, I, I hope Chris has it. I, he must have that record. I don't know if I have that record anymore. I don't know where it is. I remember one song from it <laughs> and that's, and that's about it. But um, yeah, it was our old, our original bass player who played on the project with us in college. He, um, he was also, he played, a, he plays a gig for, with us from time to time. If our bassist is out or something like that, our original bassist will hop on. Um, so he's still close with the band and it was his idea to kind of like, you know, start it, start an actual band. And then he was the first one leaving cause he got a wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was te- it was technically his idea, and uh, we put out a Craigslist ad for a drummer, and uh, maybe like three weeks later, after a couple of really awkward responses from people, say, we found seems safe. Yeah. <laughs> seems safe. <laughs> it was like a you know it was one of those like drunken ideas. We were all like we were drinking at my house, and like our bass player was like, ah, we gotta like start a band for fun. And I was like, well, what are we gonna do? Like put out a Craigslist ad for a drummer. And then it was like, yeah, let's do it. That's hilarious. So like, it was kind of like a joke. And then we, thank God we found Keith who was our age, lived right down the street, not far from us. And, uh, he was perfect. Yeah. I'm glad that that worked out for you. I feel like drummers, me being a drummer uh, and me knowing a lot of drummers, <laughs> I would say like drummers are typically a certain type of loud, boisterous animal and to fi- try to try to find one of those on Craigslist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really, <laughs> I don't believe in like, I'm not somebody that believes in things that were meant to be, but like, I, I believe that we were supposed to like, we had to have found Keith. Like it's just too perfect. And now, you know, he's been there ever since he's, he was a huge factor when it came to like the creative side of the band, like he just fit perfectly personality. I mean, he's a drummer. He's definitely personality wise. He's a drummer, but <laughs> but he like definitely fit with us. Um, he was just, yeah. Best thing I ever found on Craigslist <laughs> right after my West Elm coffee table. <laughs> yes. Nice. He'll be, he'll be happy to hear that big shout out to he you, will. Keith. So yeah, Keith. Uh, obviously, <laughs> You're the coolest member of the band. You're the drummer. You have my respect, Keith. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, you know, you decided to, to go ahead and, you know, kind of take it, um, you know, take it and go ahead and form it into a band. Let me ask you, because you said you've been writing ever since you were a teenager. What kind of music were you inspired by? What kind of stuff were you into when you first ever got into music? See, ma- me growing up, personally, like, I grew up on country music. And then I found like classic rock. And then somehow in high school, I became a punk rocker, you know, and I was like, oh, my God, oh, wow. taking back Sunday. I'm a punk rocker now, you know, <laughs> and that's how I got where I was. But what about you? Man. Um, it's so funny how everybody's journey is a little different. I grew up, you know, like my dad plays guitar and he he taught me, you know, I remember him teaching my first chords. I think the first song he taught me on guitar was like Horse With No Name, <laughs> something like that. Um and so growing up with classic rock, probably like most people around our age would. And then, you know, I, God, did you, I'm guessing, did you grow up in the nineties? I grew up in the nineties. Oh yeah, definitely. I was born in 1986. I'm 32 years old. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm right behind you. I'm 87. So, um, grew up in the nineties. What a great time for singer songwriters, man. The nineties had like incredible singer songwriters, like, God, we saw Alanis Morissette. We saw, you know, even on like the end of the 90s, early 2000s for young girls, it was like Michelle Branch, Vanessa Carlton. And like, it was, it was cool to be a singer songwriter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so definitely a lot of that. I think the first band that really got me when I was like really young, it made me want to be in, like, get more into rock music. Um, Goo Goo Dolls, Dizzy Up the Girl. What nice. a record. Oh yeah. What a record. I still listen to that record. It's what amazing. I like, what I like about um, the Goo Goo Dolls is like you hear all the stuff, you buy the record, and and you're like, yes, this is going to be so awesome. And then you take the record home, and half of the songs are sung by the bass player, and you're just like, what is this? Just give me all the Johnny Resnick <laughs> stuff. Get out of here, bass yep. player, trying to sing this song. <laughs> yep. And Dizzy of the Girl was like the first record that I kind of found. I remember having to hide it from like one of my friends because I was also like, you know. 11 and 12 year old like girl so it was like sync, you know britney spears but i remember like a piece of me really started to find rock music with like dizzy up the girl and i was like i, I remember hiding it when like my friends would come over because i didn't they, i remember one of them saw it and was like ew and i was like oh, i don't know how that got there but deep down i really loved it and then from there um 
you know, then we started to hit like the uh, early emo days. And I remember just like wanting to be Jim Adkins from Jimmy world. Yes. Like so badly. I, that's who I wanted to be. I, I loved every record. They were like probably my biggest like songwriting influence once I got into like my later teens for sure. Jimmy world is just absolutely fantastic. I love that band. Like you said, great, great albums. They consistently put out great albums. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't disappoint you. You know, they're, they're, they can, they're songs, you know, they're great songwriters are great storytellers. They really are like, they're just great. They're for forever. They'll definitely be one of my favorite bands. And then like in college, um, in college, I think I started to like, listen, you listen to a lot of stuff in college. I remember, I think like the most standout band that's still like my favorite band to this day, I got into mute math, like in college. And that's definitely like one of our big influences of our band. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into that. I'm into mute math. I, you know, I, I like a band like around that time in like the two thousands, I got really into like muse. Like that was kind of like the band. Oh, for yeah. me. It was like super into yeah. muse. And yep. muse is pretty, another band that I th- I feel like really just puts out, um, awesome music as well. Like I yep. feel like though too, muse's albums are different. So you either really like it or you really might not be into it. But I also applaud yeah. just the fact that it's like, Hey, at least you like take a chance to not recycle the same thing over and over and over again. You at least take yeah. a chance to put out a new idea in the world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, muse was great. I like muse. Um, there's so much more like, and then there was, yeah, there was like taking back Sunday and brand new and like, um, like who else? I'm trying to like remember. I was really into Cody and Cambria too. I was like really into Cody them. Cody and Cambria. Yep. Explosions in the sky. I love oh, Explosions yes. in the sky. Man, that's a yeah. throwback. I haven't thought about them in a hot minute. Yeah. Yeah, we saw them. Me and me and Chris went to go see them like a long time ago. Um, Lydia. I remember. I loved Lydia, and then which was cool. We ended up on a tour with them last year, which was like really cool. Did you fan? Um, did you fan girl? Yeah, I, like, was kind of, like, every time they went into, like, Hospital, which is, like, so huge from um their their big record, Illuminated, I, like, flipped out. I was just like, yes! Um, and the new stuff that they've put out has been great, too. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to, like, there's so many, man. <laughs> so many good bands. The Killers. I love The Killers. Oh, yeah. You know, talking yeah, about great fan, songwriters. like, fan fangirling out, fanboying mm-hmm. out, in my case, <laughs> we got to do... Uh, uh, a run like a couple weeks with Finch. Did you ever get into Finch oh, back in the day? Sh- that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I was like, oh shit! Like they they were like back together. It was like 2013, 2014 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like, um, like you know, I never met those dudes. And then randomly, uh, Randy R two K, if you will. Uh, yeah. One day he's he's outside uh, barbecuing, uh, and I'm like, I just come up there and talk to him. And for some reason, you know, I just quoted Sling Blade to him I'm a, i like okay. to movie quote like i said movies are my one of my big passions so i quoted yeah. sling blade somehow in pass in passing and then he quoted sling blade back to me and then for the next oh. two weeks we literally just quoted sling blade uh and then we'll call each other or text each other or tweet each other every once in a while with just sling blade quotes amazing <laughs> yep and, and amazing that's when i was like oh this man gets me <laughs> that yes. was awesome that's a great experience to uh, meet meet your idols, and they're they're not a bummer. You know what I'm saying? That's rare, dude. That's like super rare. Have you That's ever great. you ever met somebody uh, that you were uh, not super happy about meeting them? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, like, I don't. I, I think everyone that I've met has been exactly as I've expected them to be, um, or better. I would right. say that. I could say that for sure. I think the best surprise was we met um, Randy Jackson, <laughs> of all people, and he definitely said "Yo, dog" and fist bumped my guitar player for liking the Steelers. So that's that was, awesome. <laughs> that was cool. Did you wish no, that no you had ever... a, like a samurai sword that he could autograph, like in Step Brothers? I, I wish. <laughs> like it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. We played, and he was in the venue for some reason <laughs> stopped us and said he liked us. And so that was that, but no, I've never really met anybody that like disappointed me. I've only met like they've either met expectations or they've been better. So that's cool. Why was Randy Jackson in the venue you were playing? <laughs> that's the real question. Oh, oh, that is a great, that's actually a great one. That was, um, that's kind of like, that kind of helped our band get moving along a little bit. Basically what happened is, um, warp tour during the warp tour days, because this year's our last year. Um, 
but during the warp tour days we um we ended up being finalists on that big battle of the bands mm-hmm. ernie ball thing so we got flown out to la we were given um free music man instruments which we all still have i still play mine i got an albert lee and i still play it. it's awesome um and then so then they had a big show where all the finalists played um and randy jackson <laughs> was just hanging out <laughs> That's amazing. You know, we played yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> We played at um the Roxy in Los Angeles. Um oh, one, yeah. one time we played the Roxy. Uh that's not the cool part. I mean, that's pretty cool, but the cool part is uh Mr. Belding from Say by the Bell was there. That is cool. <laughs> so, much like your Randy Jackson moment, I too had mm-hmm. one, but Dennis Haskins mm-hmm. from Say by the Bell was there. So, big nice. shout out to Mr. Belding. What is going on here? But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so nice. I'll tell you what, Mel. Let's go ahead and uh, so the band formed 2011, fresh out of college. Mm-hmm. You're putting out yeah. albums that are in your personal uh, archive. When uh, mm-hmm. what's this? Take us through um, your first like uh, releases and take us through kind of basically how June Divided got to where you are in this uh, time and place. Oh God! <laughs> so I guess it kind of picks up from the whole Ernie Ball Warp Tour thing. We got on to the first date, and we like it was funny because it was like a two part contest, and like we got on to like the first date, and we we thought that was it. We we're like, oh, that was fun, and then they ended up calling us back, and they were like, you're finalists. You're one of four out of like I don't know how many bands are in that. And then the next year we were on for two weeks. Um, so that really kind of sped things along we've we we put out an ep um with our first single on it like god forever ago probably 2011 yeah um and then we did a full length for warp tour because we wanted to have like a full length to sell on warp tour and so th- those were the only two releases um and then once that all died down it was probably in like 2013 when it kind of started to die down we were mm-hmm. like all right so what do we want to do now you know, it felt like when we first started, like a lot of things had, we got, I, I mean, I don't want to say we got lucky because we also worked hard, but you know, a lot of stuff, we were busy when we first started. Right. Um, we were almost like too busy to make decisions. Like we made decisions on our own, but we were definitely like almost too busy in the beginning. And then like, once things calmed down, we were like, okay, so now what? And a lot of people thought we went on like a hiatus, but we never did. We uh, were constantly getting together and writing. We kind of wanted to rebuild ourselves. We um, wanted to, I guess, get new influences and kind of like change up the sound and like learn a few new things. So it took us a long time. It took us quite a few years to get it right. And then we came out with Body Wars. That's what it was. (laughs) Gotcha. Yeah, so you took some time to woodshed, get back in the... uh you know, mm-hmm. practice space, do something new. Yep. I, dude, you know, I, I understand how it is too, man. Sometimes when you're on a roll for a couple of years, you don't have time to stop and start writing new music. You're out, you're, you're doing things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're playing the shows, you're busting your ass out there on the road. You don't really have time yeah. to sit down and do that. So sometimes you do have to kind of go, um, you know, radio silence or, you know, go off the grid for a little yeah. bit and just kind of regroup. So that way you can, you know, crank out more songs crank out a new a new direction you know keep keep the band fresh again yeah it was definitely the new direction because i think we were so busy like i almost didn't even have a chance to go well like wait a minute is this what i want you know what i mean like we were writing songs but we're also you know you learn i feel like i i always tell you know younger songwriters this but like you you learn with each song that you write and so i feel like after an ep and a record i was kind of like wait, is this what I want? Do I even want this? Like, what do, what do I want? Like, and that took, and then, and you know, there's four people in the band. So I think they were all at, we were all asking ourselves the same question. And I think we all had some different answers. So it was really hard. So not only do you have to kind of discover yourself as an artist, but you also have to like make sure everybody in, in tow is happy. And so that took a bit too, but we finally somehow (laughs) made it work yeah that is definitely the hardest part listeners out there if you know you if you're in a band you probably know what i'm talking about but for those that you know may not be playing in bands or or, are starting a band you know it's one thing for you to be happy for you to achieve your goals but you're playing on a team you know you're playing on a team with you know three four Mm -hmm. five other people and uh 
things that make you happy may not make the other you know members happy things that you find um you know to be fulfilling to you might not be fulfilling to somebody else news that you get might make you feel great and other people feel like uh, crap. And you got to just always got to juggle that dynamic. You got to keep everybody happy and you got to keep everybody on the same page and you got to keep everybody motivated and ready yeah. to go forward at all the time, man. Because just like a car, you blow one tire, you're not going to get very far. You know, you do have three other ones, yeah. but that, that one is going to keep going to slow you down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Car references. Nailed it. Car references. <laughs> yeah, no, that's abs- it's absolutely absolutely true man it's you know and i think it's important to have like a good dynamic like our our band again like i hate using the word lucky because it's like you know you all work for it but there is a little bit of luck involved like we all four well the three of my bandmates they're all great they're great they're dependable they care they're motivated they are creative um and everything they bring to the table is something you know valuable super valuable um and that's it's tough to find like four four people that don't like flake and just like dick out on you or whatever it right. is like but i definitely have like three bandmates that are just like they're solid and everybody has i think this is probably why we've been around for so long is like everybody has a job and everybody is really good at their job and like they're kind of irreplaceable at their job which right. is really cool. That's also important. Like everybody in a band has to have the job that they have and they have to like and be good at the job that they have. So like, like, man, yeah, I guess it is luck. We are, we are very lucky. Well, you know what? And and there you go. And I'm, I'm stoked. I think that what you guys uh, are doing too is amazing. And I hope the success just keeps on keeping on. I actually found you guys, uh, thanks to, uh, well, it was a one, it was a combination of things, but first time I, um, caught you guys was um on the revival 52 playlist and listeners you probably have heard me talk about the revival 52 playlist uh quite a bit over the past few weeks uh revival recordings is uh the label that your boys and uh-huh baby yeah were signed to and it's the label that june divided has inked to deal with as well and they have a playlist called revival 52 and uh, they're putting out new music each week for 52 weeks every week in 2018. If you haven't yet, you definitely have to go check it out right now. Uh, all you have to do is go to ffm.to slash revival 52. ffm.to slash revival 52. Sign up now. Once they hit a thousand subscribers, dude, they're giving away an Amazon Echo. And who doesn't want an Amazon Echo? Mel, you want an Amazon Echo, don't you? I do. I don't know if I'm eligible for the contest, but if I was, that'd be great. Exactly. Wouldn't that be nice? Guys, an Amazon Echo would make everybody uh, feel way better about their lives. So definitely go to ffm.to slash revival52 and follow the playlist right now. Do it right now. But the cool thing about it is if you follow that playlist, you're going to get some choice jams from June Divided. And like I said, that's where I first... Uh, ran into uh, your guys' music. You got a new single called I Didn't yes. Mind. And uh, yep. why don't you tell the listeners, like, so, what's the backstory behind the single? And then also you got a new music video that looks like a million dollars. It might not have cost you a million dollars, but it certainly looks like <laughs> it did. Um, what's the backstory like, behind I the feel like, I feel like everything to a musician feels like a million dollars. Right? <laughs> like, it might as well cost a million dollars. That's true. Um, but the backstory, oh, what a great song to ask for a backstory because this one has a backstory um we it's funny earlier you mentioned taking back sunday we actually worked on this um record with fred mascherino of taking back sunday nice um with this record um which is great um i didn't mind and then there's another song on it too um where, where this applies to too but i didn't mind we we came up with and we didn't really have a lot of time left with Fred. He was really busy trying to finish the rest of the record. And, um, I actually wrote it in my car, which is, <laughs> I actually wrote a lot of the, this record in my car. I would just like hear it in my head and then I would like get to work or get back home and, ju- you know, put it into logic. <laughs> right. Um, but, um, so I didn't mind was like one of the last things written for the record. And I, I, 
you know, I demoed it out and showed the guys and they were like, oh man, okay, this has to be on the record. I was like, this is like, I was like, this is what's been missing. Like, this is what the right, like, we need this on the record. And I feel like every songwriter always feels like that about like every song they write, like in the moment that they write it, they're like, oh, this is great. But we really, we really felt like the record needed it. Um, and we didn't have a lot of time with Fred. So we rented out a studio on our own, just the four of us by our lonesome self. <laughs> and we went and we did it ourselves. Um, and it was during a snowstorm, um, snowstorm Jonas, um, a couple of years ago. It was, it was a big storm. We got snowed in. Um, we didn't bring enough supplies cause we weren't expecting the snowstorm. Um, we were probably up for two days straight and that is the product that came out of it. Well, I'm glad Jonas didn't, uh, you know, even though it might've snowed you in, it didn't rain on your creative parade there. Uh, uh, but, I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Zing. Weather jokes, man. First, I got this car like references, it. these weather jokes. I'm just knocking it out of the park, listeners. Um, oh, yeah. Dude, speaking of Fred, don't want to, I, I want I'm going to keep this train rolling, so we're going to go right back. But just speaking of Fred, uh, I used to go see his old band. He used to do a band called Breaking Pangea before he was ever in Taking yeah, Back no, Sunday. Yeah. And they would play Louisville like every six weeks. I mean, they play all the time, like every couple months, Breaking Pangea. Yeah would play and I probably saw Breaking Pangea like 10 times and then randomly it's like oh hey he's in Taking Back Sunday I was like holy shit balls I cannot I am so excited for your success so dude I didn't know that you worked with Fred that's awesome we did you know and I think it was kind of fun too because like our, our old stuff was very like I don't like our our older two records they were very like more like like warp toury like just straight rock you know what I mean two guitars bass drums and this new record was, you know, there's a lot of pop and electronic elements mixed in with rock. And um, I think, like, when people heard that we were working with Fred, they thought we were going to do just more of the same of what we had done. Fred was also kind of, like, wanting to do something different, too. So, like, it's kind of funny that we both came from that, like, straight, like, rock scene. But we, we both Fred and the band wanted to, like, kind of create something new. So we were both on, like, the same mission. So that was cool. That's fantastic. And after, yeah. the, after I'm going to go ahead and put the song break in now. I feel like the listeners have to check out. I didn't mind. I, they have to check it out right now. So, guys, check this out. And then on the other side of the break, we're going to talk all about the music video. But for right now, this is June Divided with I Didn't Mind.
right, everybody. That was June Divided taking you to Toontown on that one, taking you to Toons Farm. Did you? <laughs> do you guys? Do you guys have uh, Boone's Farm? That cheap wine. No, but if it's wine, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might not. You might not be saying that after you sampled it. It's a. Uh, it's a sweet no. country wine that you can get at most no. grocery stores around here. No. You don't have to go to a liquor store. Just get it at the grocery store. It's called Boone's uh, Farm. In, in uh, Pennsylvania, that's kind of hard to do sometimes. Well. Yeah. Come come to Indiana. Trust me. You know what? Uh, we'll yeah. s- next time I'm I'm up in uh, your area. I'm up in uh, Pennsylvania. I'll bring you some. And you can be like, Definitely. wow, this was a really, that was really wasteful of you to take this all the way here because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, <laughs> taking you to Toontown, taking you to Toons Farm. That was June Divided there. New single, I Didn't Mind, off of their album Body Wars, which is going to be coming out 824, August 24th on Revival Recordings. And uh, as I said before the break, you guys shot an awesome video for it. What are the deets on the video? Give me some of the background information. I'm sure the listeners are going to definitely want to check that out. Oh, man, the video. This was their second time shooting this video. <laughs> nice. The first time didn't The first time didn't work out so well. We don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> so um, the second time shooting it was success. <laughs> um, Great. Knocked the, it out of the park. We, nailed it. Yeah. Yes, and that was thanks to 410 Media here in Philadelphia. They are just the greatest. And um, they're, they, it was like just a two person team, and they just like absolutely knocked it out of the park. They were great. That's fantastic. You know, from somebody yeah. that has a film background, do you ever, um, are you the one that comes up with uh, the concepts for your video, or do you just decide, you know what, we got to do these performance shots and we got to look super cool? Um, for this one, I mean, I don't think I've ever had concept. Believe it or not, I haven't had concepts. I did have like, like videos that I thought looked pretty and cool. Like we just kind of wanted a fun video with really cool lights and a cool look, and so that's kind of what we did. The lights were actually um, Lenny, my bass player. That was Lenny's brainchild. He's a lighting designer. He's been out with Circus Survive. He's been out with um, this YouTube star Jacob Satorius. He's been out with big names. He's just a you know, he's great at what he does. So all of those lights in the video, he programmed them to our song. That was all him. It's wow. Cool. That's fantastic. You don't, you don't get that uh, too often where it's like, Oh yeah. The guy that's in my band also can just totally design this awesome light show and does that professionally as well. Uh, so yeah. Remember, remember, yeah. Remember what I said about um, everybody in the band has to have a job and be good at it. Right. Well, yeah. I thought that would be like, oh, yeah, this guy packs the trailer uh, better than the other he one. He also packs the trailer. <laughs> he does pack the trailer. <laughs> yes, there you go. That was Shout out to Lenny for packing the trailer. Dude, Lenny, big shout out, brother. I feel your pain, man. As a, as the drummer, uh, I came up with a lot of... Uh, of the creative uh, side of it. And uh, I did cool. a lot of like the merchandise and like the des- graphic design and what have you designed a lot of our flyers and whatnot, but that's cool. Loading and unloading the trailer. That was, that was one of my other side jobs. So Lenny, uh, Lenny, I, yeah. you have earned my respect j- for a job. Well done. Good job, Lenny. He, he, he wears a lot of hats. He also does a lot of the managing. He does a lot of our booking. He's a, uh, I'm sure he does more. (laughs) He does a lot. (laughs) A lot of our live stuff, like a lot of our live setup, he works on. Lenny does, he wears many hats in June Divided. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, I'm bald, so I wear a lot of hats too. Oh, (laughs) so that's great. (laughs) Big shout out, Lenny, uh, for uh, making us look good in hats. But yeah, um, (laughs) so you got a brand new album. Like I said, new album called Body Wars. It's going to be out on Revival Recordings. And, uh, like uh, I know we had discussed it earlier, but you know I, I'm familiar with the Re- Revival Recordings family. How did you guys get hooked up with them? Oh my gosh! Launch Music Conference in 2017. Yeah, <laughs> I just to make sure I had the, the year right. Yeah, Launch Music Conference is this you know just a music conference out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, we played it. A revival was there. We had played some of the, we had played the songs off body wars. Um, cause we were kind of looking for a home. We needed the record needed a home. Um, and they caught a set. We had a good set. <laughs> um, and they caught it and, you know, we talked and kept in touch over a couple, uh, 
months. It's kind of like a relationship. Like, yeah, we talked, we <laughs> talked over a couple of months and then, you know, we finally, you know, came to an agreement and here we are. They're we, great. They were, they worked with us through the whole thing. They're great. Well, we texted back and forth, exchanged yeah. you know, numbers and then we decided kept we, it casual. Yeah. And then we, we were like, well, now we got to meet up in person. And then, yeah, I guess you yeah. could say it's a done deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Big shout out to Sean and Nick and everybody there at the Revival Absolutely. Family. Great guys. And, uh, you know, they did a lot for us and, uh, uh, you know, worked well with us. And I'm glad that, you know, you guys are uh, uh, in the mix, too. You guys will, they'll do a lot for you and you guys will, you know, obviously do a lot for them, too, because they're going to be nailing it. You guys are fantastic. Thank you. That's the goal. You know, good music by good people. <laughs> that's their That's their slogan. I love it. That's true. Yeah. So what are some of the themes and things that people can expect from Body Wars, from the new album there? Whoa, we just slipped right to a heavy question. Some of the themes. Um, so <laughs> Body Wars, you know, I think like the title track kind of says it all. That's out on the Revival 52 playlist. That was the first single we released from um, the record. Um I think Substream magazine said it was like the anthem for indecision. I I never looked at it, I had never really looked at it that way, but I love that someone looked at it that way. I think that's really cool. For me, it was just kind of like, you know, when your heart and your head don't get along. And it's also a lot about like I did a mind is a lot about this too, and it's found it's another theme that you can find on the record. Like realizing that you're like not all right with something and like that's okay. That's part of the healing process. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that really is an important step, and sometimes you just gotta, I don't know, uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta be able to say like, hey, this is how I feel, and you know, especially uh, there's so much like, um, I mean, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but there's so much like you gotta agree, you have to agree with people, or you have to try to get along with people, and you have to mm -hmm. try to do, you know, you want to try to go with the flow and be a part of the gang, but sometimes you just gotta put your foot down and be like, you know what. I'm not cool with this. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. this just how, is how it is. And you can't, you know, you can't change my mind. This is just what it is, you know? Yeah. That's definitely what's a lot there is like, you know, you want to convince yourself that you're fine with something or you're not hurting. And then it's like kind of about that moment where you're like, Oh, I am conflicted. I am upset. Like, but like being okay, like coming to the realization that like, that's okay. You don't have to be mad at yourself right. for being conflicted. And that's really what body wars is about. Yeah, because so many, you know, so many times, like you, you might get upset, and your friends be like, "Oh, come on, dude, cheer up!" Or, "Hey, you yeah. know, uh, you're not acting like yourself. You need to get back uh, on track." And sometimes you, you just need to be like, "Hey, man, I need to just not be cool with this for a little bit, and let me work it out." You know? Yes, it's absolutely okay to not be cool with something. That is a huge life lesson for sure. Definitely a theme on Body Wars. Nice man, hitting us with the the deep lessons here today, guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My age is showing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you this. Okay, I know that was a that was a hard hitting question. Okay, here's the real deal question: Did you ever go to Disney World when you were a kid and ride the ride Body Wars? Oh my god! Okay, no, I don't think I did. But when I came up with the song title, <laughs> I can't just asked me that. Okay, when I came up with the song title, because I obviously wrote the song before I like decided that would be the title track. Um, as soon as I came up with it, I was like, wait, is this, I just thought it was clever. You know and I was like? It's cool. Like it makes sense. Like it, it's a thing. And I, I Googled it immediately to make sure that there were no other albums or songs out there called body wars. And that was the only thing I found that was like a discontinued ride at Disney world. Yes. I went to Disney 1991, five years old. It's the first and only time I've ever been to Walt Disney world. So listeners out there, if you need uh, a second or third person to tag along to Disney World, hit me up. But uh, yeah, the last time that I went was in 1991, and they had a ride there, oh and it was called Body Wars. And essentially, you it was one of those kind of like, I don't know, 4D experience things where you're in the chair, and the chair moves, and you're in front of a big screen, and it just goes through the human body. So it's like, oh, I'm these blood cells pumping through these veins, going through oh the different uh, you know systems. And what have you? Yeah, you're well, the you're the only person to make that connection. I've never had because I remember I like talked to the guys about. I was like, okay, believe it or not, there's no song, no album out there called Body Wars. Like this can be ours. This is freaking great. The only thing there is is this like discontinued ride at Disney World, and we all laughed and we're like, no one's ever gonna think of that. 
And guess what? And no one has until now. <laughs> Sean Thriller Smith is on the case. Guys, you know that I love my pop culture. So this just proves it. That, yes. Uh, Amazing. That and I was just like, you know, I only went to uh, Disney World in 1991. So it's like, hey, man, did you did you ride Body Wars? Did you see Captain EO with Michael Jackson? Did you get to uh, go oh to the gosh. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids theme park? You know, part Yes, of the, did that one. And it's yep. just like, oh, none of those things are here. And I'm like, well, rats. Doesn't seem like Disney World's that cool at all. You know? No, they changed it. It's not even MGM Studios anymore. Now it's Hollywood Studios. I'm so confused. <laughs> really? It's Hollywood Studios? Yeah. Now it's Hollywood Studios. Yes, I'm planning a trip there this summer, so I know it's Hollywood Studios. Gotcha. Well, what do they do? Is it the exact same park, just a different name? Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, they just renamed it. Oh, cool. Yeah. To confuse people that are getting older. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, well, that's awesome. And so I had a, you know... I wanted to take a take a break from all the hard hitting questions about you know what are the deep themes? What, how did you feel when you were writing this sort of thing? You know? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so you got uh, you got the new album uh, coming out again, guys. Body Wars. It's out on Revival Recordings on August twenty fourth, twenty eighteen, A D. Of course, uh, and uh, <laughs> you can also check out some of the singles already all right so you can get a sneak peek again by going to ffm.to slash revival 52 and following the revival 52 playlist week after week you're going to get some sweet jams uh so yeah so what do, what do you guys have planned uh going in for the summer besides of course your disney world vacation <laughs> um we kind of have a somewhat quiet summer we have i can't Wait, when is um I don't know if I can say it all. Oh, man. Um we do have some we do have some things um coming. We have one kind of cool show that we're gonna announce and then we have our record release show and we have a tour coming up after that. We're still kinda hammering out the details. Um and that's kind of what we have for this summer. Well guys, you gotta stay posted. Um I'm gonna be posting all the links, of course. Uh, to the social media, where can people find, you know, do you, off the top of your head, do you have some of your Facebook links, Twitter, what's your social media uh, where people can um, follow you guys and see what you so guys we are, got we are the Yeah, we are the only June Divided. So if you like Google us, that's us. Like there's nobody else. <laughs> um, um, it's just Facebook backslash June Divided. Um, our Instagram is just June Divided. Our Twitter is just June Divided. Snapchat, just June Divided. Gin divided. <laughs> so, it, that's it. Um, and we do have a pre-order out for Body Wars available now, too. And I think if you pre if you pre-order it, there's like a bunch of cool contests. I think you're automatically entered to win a bunch of cool prizes. One is like a signed ukulele. Um, there's some bonus tracks that you'll can only get through the pre-order. Um, and some cool my my drummer. Um, he makes these really cool like Edison bulb, like steampunk kind of style lamps. And he like, br- like brands are, he like wood burns our logo into it. Those are up for, for um, a prize too. So it's pretty cool pre-order. An Edison bulb wood burned themed lamp. That sounds like something that I need for right here in the podcast studio, right here in the Smithsonian. So I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and enter this contest. Where can people enter it? Is it on revival recording site or? Um, yeah, it's on Revival's site. Um, our Instagram bio has a link to it, like right in the top. Um, our all of our social media has links to it. Like it'll be the first thing you see on like every social media <laughs> site that you find us on. It's all over the place. Fantastic, and uh, yeah, so definitely, listeners, you have to you'll have to follow uh, June Divided, and you're gonna definitely have to pick up Body Wars. Get that pre order, man. Get that contest in. Who doesn't want an Edison bulb lamp? I do. I'm jealous that maybe yeah. I can't enter. Maybe I can. I don't know. We'll see. I think I think you can. I don't know. <laughs> People will know it's rigged if I win. They'll just be like, you know what, <laughs> Sean won. That was rigged. So you know what? He'll 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 make one spe- he'll make one special for you from drummer to drummer. Oh yeah, that's awesome. The craftsmanship, man. Drummers are so cool. Mm-hmm. I could just go on forever about how drummers are just the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I kind of <laughs> secretly want to be a drummer. That's always like my secret dream. I can drum a little bit. I'm not, you know, I'm not great, but I can, I can hold a beat down. <laughs> I think a lot of vocalists secretly want to be drummers, and I'm, sh- I think every drummer just secretly wants to be a vocalist. Well, let's just switch then. Why don't we? Why don't we? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Switch. I just feel like if I could oh, sing, yeah. I'd be like, oh, who needs drums? Drums are lame. You know what I'm saying? But I, I can't, so <laughs> I gotta play them. So. 
But also, too, you were telling me uh, on our break that not only um, are you a uh, the vocalist of June Divided, but you're also uh, a music teacher and a voiceover actress. How, what do you enjoy most yep. about the teaching of it? Do you just do is are, are you teaching classes of kids? Are you doing the private lessons? What kind of teaching are you doing? So that? I do I do private vocal lessons. Um, I work at a school. I work at um, Let There Be Rock School. Um, I love teaching voice. It's really awesome. Um, you get to like, and I've taught piano and I've taught ukulele um, and some beginner guitar before, and that's fun. But like, my favorite kind of lessons are voice lessons, just because like singing is so different than playing an instrument. Like it's so much more mental and so much more in a way physical too. So you really get to know like your student on a whole nother level when they're your voice student, which is really cool. Um, so teaching voice is great. It's definitely, it gives you like cool one-on-one time with somebody and you know, it's, it's really great. And it's fun to see like a student really, really progress and come back and hit like a note that they couldn't get, you know, maybe six months before. Um, and then my voiceover stuff is just stuff. I work for like a production company. I've done like a, like a commercial or two here and there, if I'm lucky enough to get them, they, they come in. It's nice working from home. That's my favorite part about voiceover stuff is working from home. <laughs> yeah. I feel that I too work from home in this podcast mm. and boy, is it nice to sometimes I'm it's like, really I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to wear shorts today. No big deal. Yep. You know, it's pretty great. It's going to make that happen. Yep. Let me ask you too, as a voice teacher, do you uh, pick the curriculum or do the students pick what songs they want to learn? Um, it kind of depends. Like each student's different. Sometimes you have a student that's like really open up for whatever. That's like the dream. You know what I mean? Um, so at that point, like I'll pick, but sometimes you have like, especially with kids that can be a little more like opinionated or fussy with it. So you definitely want to like, I never want my students singing stuff that they hate. Like right. that's, there's no point in that there's lessons in all kinds of music. So like I just, as long as it's challenging enough for them and they're, they're going to walk away with something, it kind of depends. I normally try to like make sure like I'll, I'll run it by them. Like, what do you think of this? Or what? And then they'll throw out a song and I'll be like, okay, that's pretty good. But that's kind of the hardest part of the job is actually like finding study pieces for people to learn. But once right. you get a good piece, then you're, then you're set. Yeah, because wouldn't it be awesome, though, if somebody... Uh, the reason why I asked that question, because, you know, I'm sure that there will oh, there'll be a time when a student comes in and it's like, yeah, I want to learn, you know, Hammer Smash Face by Cannibal Corpse. Can you show me how to sing this? You know, or something like that. <laughs> like, well, uh, no, I can't show you that. I can show you, uh, you know, um, I can show you this Katy Perry song, <laughs> you know, or whatever. <laughs> I, I definitely don't teach like screaming. It's just like, it's really bad for you. And I actually got hurt. Um, not from screaming or anything, but like, I try to promote really good vocal health. <laughs> it's cool when people do it. It's one of those things where it's like, if you're going to do it fine, do it as healthily as you can. There's no right way to do it, but like fine. But <laughs> I don't tell my students to do that. <laughs> there's no right way to do it, but there's certainly many wrong ways to do it. So please mm-hmm. don't do those. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you what, as we wrap up the podcast here, I do want to ask you, since, uh, you know, you did say that, you know, you're, you're, you love movies, you wanted to score movies. What are some of your favorite, what are some of your favorite films that you got, that you, uh, favorite keep, films. keep coming back to over the years? Do you have any? You know, I used to say, I used to say how much I loved Big Fish, but then I had like a bunch of guys use, like I said it in an interview and then I had like a bunch of guys use like the, um, the main character's line that he uses to get Sandra Templeton to me. And I was mm-hmm. like, Oh my God, I can't, like now I get nauseous when I think of that movie. Thank you to those men out there <laughs> ruining it. <laughs> what was the line? <laughs> what is he just like? I love you. Um, I will marry you. It was, yeah, it was the one where he's like, you know, truth is I've always been a fool. Mm. And like he, he gets real persistent and pushy. Like I used to think that scene was cute. And now after having quite a few men use that line, now <laughs> because I'm just they knew I liked the movie kind of grossed out. Yeah. Now I kind of like just now I get sick. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, one of my favorites, um, have you ever seen the movie Frank? Frank? No, uh, no, I don't think so. Oh man, it's super good. It's about, if you're a musician, you got to watch it. It's about like an indie band and like the guy wears like the main, the lead singer wears like this giant, um, uh, paper mache head. It was based off of, um, 
a real guy. I think his name was like Frank Sidebottom bottom or something like that. But the movie is just, it's, it's great. It's really cool. Especially if you've ever, like if you've been in a band and, and have struggled, <laughs> you know, the, the movie that I would recommend uh, for that, this is actually a big thing uh, for me. Like I said, growing up, I was like always into movies and randomly I got into music, but the, the, the turning point for me where I'm like, I really want to be a musician, specifically a drummer is the day I saw that thing you do. Did you ever see that? Oh, thing that you do? thing you do is like, um, yeah, that's one, that's probably the best music movie <laughs> ever. Yeah. yeah. And it's totally quotable. Yeah. I've spent hours quoting that movie with, uh, random other musicians, but that's when I first, I was like, man, I want to be a musician. I want to be in a band. I want to be the drummer. Like, thank you, Tom Hanks for writing, yep. producing and directing that thing you do, because without you, I that's... might, yeah, I don't know. I might just be like, uh, you know, some nerd somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I still know like all the songs. Like I could probably sing you all the songs off the soundtrack. <laughs> well, and then I'll probably go to your vocal lessons uh, and just Sweet. bring it, bring the soundtrack in. Back, I'd like to learn these, please. So, well, dude, well that's funny because I want to learn the drums to the song. That thing you do, I got the beginning down. Like the, you know, I had. I, I just going to get to the whole way through. Yeah, well, you know what? It's a deal. All right, it is Sweet. done. I'm going to take some vocal lessons. You're going to take some drum lessons. And then we're going to have that, that thing you do soundtrack. We'll, we'll just go on the road as the wonders part two. We, the, the Oneaters. The, uh, hey, that's on netters. <laughs> yeah. Words <laughs> out on you. Oneaters. <laughs> hey, that's on netters. Uh, or, or, um, Captain Geach and the shrimp shack shooters. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. And it's yeah. weekend at party <laughs> pier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes that's best movie that's one of the best absolutely that thing, frank is not like as family lovable as frank is like one of those like kind of weird like indie it's really good it's really really great but like that thing you do is like it's not it's not as epic as that thing you do that thing that thing you do is just like the most epic music movie absolutely and it's in such a great time period as well like this early 60s yeah. of rock and roll oh, music yeah. fantastic Big shout yeah. out to you, Tom Hanks. Way to knock it out of the park, okay? Yeah, Tom Hanks. We love you, Tom Hanks. Exactly. You gave us Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, yep. and that thing you mm -hmm. do in like a matter big. of three years. Big yep. ups. Big, big ups on you there, Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, is Frank, uh, is that on Netflix? It, um, it was last time I checked. And boom, people. That's how you take a conversation full circle. We started talking about Sweet. Netflix. Now we're ending with Frank on Netflix. <laughs> but yes. But yep. Mel, I'll tell you what. It's been great sitting down and chatting with you and getting to know you. And I wish you guys all the luck and all the success in the world. Listeners, again, do not forget. Go ahead and pre-order, man. Get yourself in a contest. Pre-order Body Wars. And that is out on August 24th, 2018 from Revival Recordings. And yeah, what do you guys, Mel, uh, can you re just remind the listeners again where uh, they can find you online? Uh, Instagram handle and Twitter handle is just June divided. Like, that's it. Just the <laughs> just like the month cut in half, June divided. And uh, Facebook is just backslash June divided. We're the only June divided out there. It's pretty easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> so if you just search our name. Simple. No frills. Yep. No BS. No frills. Just June divided. Yep. Well, fantastic. Yep. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in, of course, to another episode of the Sean vs. Wild podcast. If you like what you heard, and something tells me that you might have because you've already made it this far into the podcast. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It is on YouTube. It is where, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast, man. Google Play, uh, whatever. It's there. Check it out. And also check out June Divided. Also, if you're on the Spotify, again, follow the Revival 52 playlist. Uh, and a short link to do that is just go to ffm.to slash Revival 52. Check out June Divided and a bunch of awesome bands. And Mel, thank you so much for doing the show today. Really loved being able to talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This was a blast. Hey, no problem. Now, it's time for you to go watch some Westworld, okay? But no spoilers, yes. please. But we will keep up on this. As soon as I as soon as I uh, catch up uh, on season two, I'll message you. I'll hit you up, and we'll talk all about please it. Please do. We got to talk about it. I'm, like, obsessed. Go watch it as soon as you can. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> exactly. Part two of my conversation with Mel will be in a few months uh, whenever, and it's just going to all be about Westworld. So, listeners, yes. listeners, beware. You're in for a scare. We're going to be talking about Westworld. But, guys, uh, yeah, thanks so much for listening. This has been another exciting, awesome episode. 
of the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Thank you for listening, DNN.